The standard form of writing numbers is you have a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of something. But how about doing calculations in standard form? For example, write down the value of 5 times 10 to the power of 5 times by 6 times 10 to the power of 4. There are some neat tricks to solving questions like this. What I would do, first of all, is rearrange it so you've got the numbers together and the powers of 10 next to each other. In this case, that would be 5 times 6 times by 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 4. And yes, you are allowed to do that. Just like 2 times 3 is 3 times 2, you can move about multiplications to get the order you want. Now when I phrase the question in this way, it might look a bit easier. What is 5 times 6? It's 30. And 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 4. Well, what we can do for that is add the powers. When you multiply two numbers with the same base, so in this case 10, you can simply add the powers on top. 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 4 is going to be 10 to the 9. Now, are we done? Is this standard form 30 times 10 to the power of 9? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? But remember, this number, this first number, has to be between 1 and 10. It can't be 30. Oh dear, how are we going to solve that problem? How about if we divide this number by 10? So it's now 3. But you're wondering, you can't just divide that by 10. That changes the entire number. You're right. To compensate for dividing that by 10 in order to turn it into standard form, we're going to have to multiply this term by 10. It's almost like 20 times by 3 is the same thing as 2 times by 30. Because we divided the 20 by 10, to keep the overall answer the same, we have to multiply the 3 by 10 to cancel out the divide by 10. We've divided the 30 by 10 to get it into standard form, so we have to multiply the 10 to the power of 9 by 10. And 10 to the power of 9 times 10 is 10 to the power of 10. It just bumps up the power by 1. If you don't quite believe that, you can write it out. So 10 to the power of 9 times 10. And 10 is just 10 to the power of 1, isn't it? Multiplying these two, add the little powers, and you get 10 to the power of 10. Notice what we did, though. We can't leave our answer as 30 times 10 to the power of 9. You've always got to check that your final answer is actually written in standard form. If the question is write down the value of a certain expression, then you write the full expression out. If it says write your answer in standard form, you'd write as we've done here. If you're interested to know the actual value of this number, well, it's 3 with 10 zeros. 3 with 10 zeros. That's 7 so far, and 10. That would be 30 billion. Okay, a new calculation now. Again, using standard form. 6 times 10 to the power of 8, divided by 12 times 10 to the power of 5. Well, because it's all multiplied together, we can actually do some cancelling. We can't do that if it's added or minus, top or bottom. You can only cancel when things are multiplied together. So because it's all multiplied together, we can now cancel some of these expressions. For example, you can cancel out a 10 to the power of 5. In other words, divide by 10,000, top and bottom. What you get then is 6 times 10 to the power of 3 
notice we've divided by 10 to the power of 5, top and bottom, and 10 to the power of 8, divided by 10 to the power of 5. When you divide, you minus the powers. So that becomes 10 to the power of 3, 8 minus 5. The bottom line only has a 12 now, because we've divided top and bottom by 10 to the power of 5. Remember, with a fraction, you can divide top and bottom by anything you want, as long as you do the same thing to top and bottom. Finally, what about this 6 divided by 12? Well, 6 divided by 12 is a half, or 0 0.5. So there we go. We get 0 0.5 times by 10 to the power of 3. Have we written our answer in standard form? Unfortunately not. Just like with 30 times 10 to the power of 9, 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of 3 is not standard form. This first number has to be between 1 and 10. 0 0.5 is not between 1 and 10. How do we get it to be between 1 and 10? Well, we're not going to divide by 10 like we did to the 30. We're going to times by 10. Times by 10. So it now becomes 5. Well, as before, it would be unfair if we just times this by 10 and left this the same. To compensate, we have to divide this by 10. Again, to use the example, if we times 2 by 10 to get to 20, we have to divide the other expression by 10. So it balances out and keeps the same answer. 10 to the power of 3 divided by 10 becomes 10 to the power of 2 using the same logic we did for 10 to the power of 9 becoming 10 to the power of 10. When you multiply by 10, it goes up by 1. When you divide by 10, it goes down by 1. So the final answer for this whole calculation in standard form is 5 times 10 to the power of 2. As an actual number, that would be 5 followed by two zeros, or 500.